another day. Another book to read, or the same book, plus some more pages. John Steinbeck. it ain't like that. We got a future. We got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. We don't have to sit in no bar room blowing in our jack j- j- blowing in our jack just cause we got no place else to go. If the mother guys gets in jail, they can rot for all anybody gives a damn. But not us. Lenny broke in. But not us and why? Because, because I got you to look after me and you got me to look after you and that's why? He laughed lightly. Go on now, George. You got it by heart. You can do it yourself. No, you. I forgot some of the things. Tell about how it's gonna be. Okay. Someday, we're gonna get And live off the fat of the land, Lenny shouted, and have rabbits. Go on, George, tell about what we're gonna have in the garden about uh, the pit, the rabbits, and the cages, and about the rain in the winter, and in the stove, and how thick the cream is on the milk, like you can hardly cut it. Tell about that, George. <sighs> Why don't you do it yourself? You know all of it. No, you tell it. It ain't the same if I tell it. Go on, George. How I get to tend to the rabbits? Well, said George, we'll have a big vegetable patch and a rabbit hatch and kittens. Or chickens. <laughs> and when it rains in the winter, we'll just say, the hell with going to work. And we'll build up a fire in the stove. Set around and listen to the rain coming down on the roofs. Nuts. He took out his pocket knife. I ain't got time for no more. He drove his knife through the top of one of the bean cans, sawed out the top, and passed the can to Lenny. Then he opened a second can. From his side pocket, he brought out two spoons and passed one of them to Lenny. They sat by the fire and filled their mouths with beans and chewed mightily. A few beans slipped out of the side of Lenny's mouth. George gestured with a spoon. What are you gonna say tomorrow when the boss asks you questions? Lenny stopped chewing and swallowed. His face was concentrated. I... I ain't gonna... say a word. Good boy. That's fine, Lenny. Maybe you're getting better. When we get the couple of acres, I can let you tend the rabbits all right. Especially if you remember as good as that. George motioned with his spoon again. Look, Lenny, I want you to look around here. You can remember this place, can't you? The ranch is about a quarter mile up that way. Just follow the river. Sure, said Lenny. I can remember this. Didn't I remember about not gonna say a word? Of course you did. Well, look, Lenny, if you just happen to get in trouble like you always done before, I want you to come right here and hide in the brush. Hide in the brush, said Lenny slowly. Hide in the brush till I come for you. Can you remember that? Sure I can, George. Hide in the brush till you come. But you ain't gonna get in no trouble, because if you do, I won't let you tend the rabbits. He threw his empty bean can off into the brush. I won't get in no trouble, George. I ain't gonna say a word. Okay, bring your bindle over here by the fire. 
it's gonna be nice leap in here, looking up in the leaves. Don't build up no more fire, we'll let her die down. They made their beds on the sand, and as the blaze dropped from the fire, the sphere of lights grew smaller. The curling branches disappeared, and only a faint glimmer showed where the tree trunks were. From the darkness, Lenny called, George, you asleep? No, what do you want? Let's have different colored rabbits, George. Sure we will, George said sleepily. Red and blue and green rabbits, Lenny. Millions of very ones, George, like I seen in the fair in Sacramento. Sure, very ones. Because I can just as well go away, George, and live in a cave. You can just as well go to hell, <laughs> said George. Shut up now. The red light dimmed on the coals. Up the hill from a, from the river, a coyote yammered, and a dog answered from the other side of the stream. The sycamore leaves whispered in a little night breeze. The bunker house, a new chapter by the way, was a long rectangular building. Inside, the walls were whitewashed and the floor unpainted. In three walls, there were small, square windows, and in the fourth, a solid door with a wooden latch. Against the walls were eight bunks, five of them made up with blankets, and the other three showing their burlap thicking. Over each bunk, there were, was nailed an apple box with the opening forward so that it made two shelves for the personal belongings of the occupant. occupant and these shelves were loaded with little articles, soap and talcum powder, razors, and those western magazines ranchmen love to read and scoff at and secretly believe. And there were medicines on the shelves and, a, and little vials, combs, and from nails on the box sides, a few necktie. Near one wall, there was a black cast iron stove, its stovepipe going straight up through the ceiling. In the middle of the room stood a big square table, littered with playing cards, and around it were grouped boxes for the players to sit on. At about ten o'clock in the morning, the sun threw bright, dust-laden bar through one of the side windows, and in and out of the beams, flies shot like rushing stars. The wooden latch raised. The door opened and a tall, stoop-shouldered old man came in. He was dressed in blue jeans and he carried a big push broom in his left arm, left hand. Behind him came George and behind George, Lenny. The boss was expecting you last night, the old man said. He was sore as hell when you wasn't here to go out this morning. He pointed with his right arm and out of the sleeve came a round, strict-like wrist, but no hand. You can have them two beds over there, he said, indicating two bunks near the stove. George stepped over and threw his blankets down on the burlap sack of straw that was a mattress. He looked into his box shelf and then picked a small yellow can from it. Say, what's the hell's this? I don't know, said the old man. Says positively kills lice, roaches, and other scourges. What the hell kind of bed you giving us anyways? We don't want no pants rabbits. The old swamper shifted his broom and held it between his elbow and his side while he held out his hand for the can. He studied the label carefully. Tell you what, he finally said. Last guy that had this bed was a blacksmith, hell of a nice fella, and as clean a guy as you want to meet. Used to wash his hands even after he ate. Then how come he got gray backs? George was working up a slow anger. Lenny put his bindle on the neighboring bunk and sat down. He watched George with open mouth. And that was page 18, so we 
I'm going to fold the page down on page 19. That was tonight's reading. Bedtime story, I guess. This is such a bad book, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for chilling out with me, I guess. I appreciate you a lot. I love you.